Hello, everyone. Um, thanks for coming to the session. Uh, let's see if it works. So, um, I guess um, you all heard and you're all thinking about this bus drivers or call center systems that we know these jobs are going to be automated in probably five to ten years. But the question that drove you, the curiosity that um, got you here to the session, I believe, is whether this high-profile, exclusive, well-paid sales job of mine will be automated as well. Can robots take over this niche domain? And I will try to provide a reasonable, satisfying answer to this one. So to begin with, I think it's worth um, getting to basics and just give it a thought. How do we normally imagine sales? I did a bit of a mental exercise myself, asked some of my friends, conducted a social poll, and then I asked Google, show me the famous salespeople, Google. And in return, Google modified my search and showed successful salesmen. So, of course, we are being bombarded by the images of very successful salesmen in Hollywood and in media. And the question is, is there a place for us in this male-dominated industry? At least the one that has been so for quite many years. And here is an interesting personal example. Um, some time ago, I came, to, I, I came to an interview. The whole floor was only guys. And I was in the interview room with uh, four men who were apparently very puzzled when I said that I left my previous work because of the bad company culture. Needless to say, I didn't satisfy their main selection criteria. So I think it's important to um, think and to see that things are actually changing as we can see in the whole today. And the current situation in sales, as well as the future, is very different from what it used to be for the last centuries. And interestingly enough, technology is playing the biggest part in this. So in, in the article um, titled the same um, uh, Why Women Should Be Excited AI, uh, which I wrote for Forbes some time ago, I'm arguing that, in fact, women should be very happy that automation is coming around. Traditionally, we are a bit more uh, conservative and apprehensive of technology, while men tend to embrace and triumph it. However, automation will actually highlight the skills and qualities that are inherently human and even female in nature. Those I call three C's. So what are those three C's that are going to be crucial in the automation age? This will be creativity, collaboration, and compassion. While both men and women are equally creative, Women historically had much less opportunities to express their creativity in the professions. Talking about collaboration, men usually are more results and victory oriented, while women tend to look for mutual benefit and peaceful resolution. It is just biologically predetermined. Career-wise, men are usually overestimating their abilities, while, men some, while women are sometimes downplaying and looking for help from the peers. While the first approach was very successful during the history, in the time of abundant resources and information, it is actually team play 
and the ability to get along with people and get things fast that will get us up to speed. Talking about compassion or empathy, women are twice more likely to become caregivers than men, which probably you can notice um, among your family and friends that it's usually a daughter that is taking care of the parents. In the UK, about 66% of caregivers are female. And this also, while slightly a sexist example, will be very important in a wide range of professions, sales as well. However, let's not limit ourselves to automation only. There is much more to technology than robots. So, I think it's important to touch upon virtual reality and holograms, which finally will completely eliminate the motherhood penalty and pregnancy discrimination that women are facing in the workforce nowadays. So, about 50 to 70 percent of a job, of any job, it's quite repetitive and monotonous, things that you do every day and that do not teach you that much to grow eventually. So I'd like you to get a moment among yourselves and come up with some mix of complaining and futuristic thinking about this one thing that you would totally give up to automation and to robotics if you had a choice. Just one thing you would be happy to give to robots. So, can you think of that? Clear answer? Clearing the path lifter. Yeah, they totally can do that. Something um, also job related. Something you are, you would be happy to give up. Driving. Perfect. Actually, I'm, I have a license, but I don't drive. I just wait for autonomous cars to come around. It's like much safer for sure in my case. Great. So I did some research of my own, and I believe that the sales will evolve in the following directions. Firstly, while it's great to have this big ticket items and drive in the red Ferrari, it's actually uh, the customer support that will become the new sales. People are buying things online, they do not care how much we persuade them. Once they buy, something happens and they come to check, so that will be the biggest um, change. Also, we are um, fastly moving into SaaS model, so it will not be the amount that you close, but the usability of the product you sell to the customers that will define the compensation. Just imagine the flexibility and dexterity of Google in your sales force. That would make things so much easier and more usable. And finally, intimate computing and PAs Currently, we can ask Alexa about the weather or playing some cool songs. What if you can, could do something more professionally relevant with it? So, um, talking about Alexa, I thought this is quite relevant. Really like that one when I saw it. Um, so, what can Alexa and Siri teach us? professionally wise. Recently, I've been talking to a friend of mine and I was asking, how can you impress your customer? How can you do things differently? And he said, tell them something they don't know. How do you do that? What is a better way of impressing your customer than telling, than giving them a solution to the problem they don't know exists yet. And personal assistant and AIs can definitely become an amazing 
tool for this solution. Just imagine, I wonder how many hours or maybe days you spend to prepare for your customer meeting? Three hours, one day, depends. What if you could delegate all this work to AI? Just give several keywords, uh, the prospect, and it will roam through the huge internet database of readily available information, preparing all information about the personality of your prospect, their current interests, the situation in the company, the stock prices, the company strategy, budgets, any plans for the future, your competition, their competition, and then you read a report in 15 minutes. How much easier would it make things, right? I would totally delegate all this research thing to Alexa. This is one of my favorite phrases. Tomorrow is already here, it's just not equally distributed. That's why I especially love reading sci-fi. Whatever you can read in sci-fi, anything you can possibly imagine can become true. So it's worth noting that while there are some things that, are, that sound very futuristic and out there, just remember, in some places, they're already a reality. So, talking about reality and futuristic things, let's get down to some Black Mirror predictions for the future. Why waste 15 minutes of our time to read the report on our prospects if we can just upload it in? There is enough research going on at the moment with information being transmitted from one mouse to the other. And as long as Elon Musk is working on Neuralink, I feel safe about this domain. Hopefully, I can save many hours of my time by uploading information in several years. Biohacking. Currently, we can already choose among several embryos we are doing in vitro. We can also design our babies, which also has been done in China a year ago. What if we could edit the genes of an already existing human being? While not very safe yet, just imagine changing yourself in the way that would make you happier, healthier, more motivated, nicer, just more satisfied with life. How much more successful would you be in your work, in your life? And last but not the least, I guess everyone heard or probably seen this no sedative episode of Black Mirror. And China is currently implementing this system, which is working quite quite strongly, I don't know how successfully, uh, among its citizens. I wonder which kind of sophisticated methodologies you ladies are having when talking to your prospects and trying to discover who is actually the decision maker, who your prospect is reporting to, because you need to close the deal ultimately. What if you can just cut down all this talk and see the org chart displayed above their head straight away? It would just make things faster and easier, especially for them. Just imagine all this interrogation they have to go through. So, I always um, loved this um, predictions in fashion magazines when I was a teenager. So it would go something like this. So pink color and skinny jeans are definitely out for the season, but flares and leopard is totally in. You should buy several of them. And by the way, leopard is everywhere today. So that's a big trend, I guess. Talking about the future of sales. What is happening today? We are moving from 
closing this big deal to people that do not really need them that much, to listening to your customer who already has plenty of available information, understanding exactly what the need might be, matching the solutions with what you have in your arsenal at the moment, and standing out by delivering a true value. And just remember, people are not buying from robots. They're not even buying from companies. They're buying from you. That's why a personal brand is key in 21st century. It won't be a robot that will take away your job, but a tech-savvy person with a strong brand definitely can. Thank you very much for your attention and looking forward to some questions. I don't know if we need the microphone. Any questions for Kate? What other stuff do you think is going to, as we move forward, what stuff is going to move backwards? Sorry, the question was if it's buying? So, sorry, no, I was talking about things like music. So yeah. obviously there's been a huge change in things like the music industry. True. iTunes, Spotify, yeah. Amazon Music. Now, whilst they're progressing forward, we've seen sales of vinyl, yes, so CDs. records, oh, okay. are, are at an all-time high. So it ties in with what you're saying about while some stuff is moving forwards, a lot of stuff is kind of not moving backwards, but going old school. Is there anything else that you predict, being the predictor, that you think will have kind of an old school resurgence? Yeah, okay, I got it. Very interesting question, actually. And um, to be fair, um, it does look from, from all this, um, futuristic predictions and sci-fi and all these lectures, even one of our lectures is a branded Brave New World, it looks like we are moving much more towards, you know, this everything digitized, the data first type of civilization, where the value of human nature and personality is actually not that important. And while to some extent it can be true, I think there is already quite a big pushback among humans. We do try to do this kind of digital detoxes. There is uh, a big push to abandon Facebook because, uh, of course, if you are not paying for the product, then you are the product. <laughs> So uh, things are moving in different directions, as you rightly noted, and I think personal interactions uh, will become more of a luxury and they will be much more valued and sometimes more expensive. It takes more time and efforts to spend time with your family, but then it's just much more important. And uh, there are many startups like um, cuddling startups that are providing some services to people who are overworked and who are just too tired of being surrounded by screens. On the other hand, as I was mentioned, I think uh, some technology like VR can actually allow us to be more detached, how paradoxically it might sound, more detached from this data economy and just um, work uh, remotely from a Greek island, let's say, or from my home city, Odessa, and hopefully have the same salary and quality of life. So things are changing, and whoever is willing to take this choice, I think they will benefit quite a lot if you know how to do things right. Thank you. Sure. Um, maybe you can expound on this uh, Facebook release their initiative to adopt Bitcoin. 
or that type of currency. And I was wondering how you think that might impact the way sales works um, and how this type of organization may be becoming like a government in itself and whether or not that's going to impact the state of selling. It's uh, a very loaded question, sorry. Sorry, what's your name? Brianna. Yeah, thanks, Brianna. So, uh, yeah, the question was uh, how Facebook new currency is going to change things uh, and um, um, what it means uh, for Facebook to become such kind of a government body de facto. Uh, it's uh, funny enough, recently a friend of mine was asking me the same question on Instagram chat, which I'm checking quite rarely. He was saying, remember that conspiracy theory article you were writing two years ago that crypto is just um, a creation of American government to collect their debt, like about 16 trillion that they currently owe to the world, through the means of cryptocurrency. While we cannot eliminate anything, the fact that an American company is issuing a regulated cryptocurrency is actually quite, uh, quite interesting to, to observe. And whether Facebook is working independently from American government or under its umbrella, it's definitely a try uh, to impose not only its social and advertising monopoly over the more or less 4 billion people nowadays, but also the financial and all the transactions. So um, unless there is very strict regulation worldwide, I think uh, we're definitely coming into the Big Brother era, and that's going to be very scary. Thanks a lot for Thank you, Kate. I think we'd better wrap up because the uh, final session in the main plenary room is going to start in a few minutes. So thank you. Thank you, everyone, for coming and for very insightful questions. <laughs>